Show. Still I'm okay? good. All good. Yeah, good. great. Fabulous. Uh, right. Terrific. Welcome to the panel. Uh, today, uh, discussing the most important news of the week, uh, we have colourful Sydney identity, Ben Fordham. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Internet Latouf. Hey, hey, no, hey. Have you not, always started taping? Have you not been Googling her recently? <laughs> ben said that he wanted to be introduced as a colourful <laughs> Sydney identity. Uh, he Hello. hosts the highest rating uh, morning radio show uh, in Sydney, probably moment. in Australia. At the moment, he says humbly. Uh, well, you never know. Like Tom's Breakfast coach. with Ben Fordham on uh, 2GB. Uh, and Antoinette Latouf, uh, independent journalist, author and host of the Antoinette's that is uh, me. fabulous podcast. How's the podcast going? You've only been doing it for a second. Yeah. Haven't you? Oh, it's been a couple of months. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Great. Um, yeah. You and another person called Antoinette her, talk about she's, the news. She's, <laughs> she's, she's is it only because her name was Antoinette? Is that the yes. only reason why the That's two why of you it's called, together? The show wasn't initially going to be called The Antoinettes, but every time we had a meeting with our production partner, I would just put like The Antoinettes and DM yeah, podcasts. Right. Um, and then they'd be like, you know what? The Antoinettes has, you it's know. Got it's got a certain ring. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's discriminatory like, though, isn't it? To anyone who's not called well, Antoinette. Yeah, you can only be Antoinette. To well, get on true. The well, that's what I was thinking. If ever one of us is unwell or one of us, like, I have to find another co host who's called another, Antoinette. Another and Antoinette. Antoinette. Slim pickings. There aren't a lot of Antoinettes. It hasn't been popular since ben, about 1890. I reckon if, if you want to be successful, Ben, mm. you need to find a Ben. Another Ben. Yeah, the Ben. And do the Bens. But then do you have to Round share the, the Bens. Do you have to share the money with them? Is that how it works yes. as well? Yes. Oh, well, we'll, talk ben, we'll talk later. We'll talk later about that. I think that. on the money that 2GB pays, you're doing okay. Yeah. You could probably split it. You could probably go halvesies and you'd still be all well, right. We did try and hire you at one point, Josh Zepp. <laughs> Are we allowed to spill those kind of secrets? You never here? made it. No, two GB never 2GB made a formal offer. Two GB made inquiries about securing they your services. Made True it. or false? No comment. I I never received an offer from 2GB. Let me repeat, okay. 2GB made inquiries about securing Josh's services. Uh, in hindsight, recent? how much- Was this how many, No, no, this isn't recent. A couple oh, of years okay. ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, how many headaches could potentially have been uh, avoided? Uh, not just for me, but or for Or created everybody. at 2GB. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm saying. thinking about all the yeah. drama we missed out on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right, exactly. Uh, look, one of the things in the news this week that I wanted to pick your brains on is this Aussie activist who's on TikTok. And what he does is in order to resolve the housing crisis, he goes around and identifies properties that are not inhabited, houses that where nobody lives. Yeah. He puts together a list so that homeless people and squatters can basically break into the houses and live there and it's got a bit of controversy about whether or not that's is it quite is it legit. quasi legal illegal quasi well illegal? quasi is the relevant point there yeah. i don't know whether the so in the united states I, I believe you're not allowed to just move into a place if it's uninhabited but in the uk and australia i think it's i think if a place has not been occupied for a certain length of time right you're not allowed to break and enter but if you can make your way into it without if you breaking make breaks if you make those, enter. exactly, that's mm. right. Then I think no, but, you're actually allowed to. But the to. publicizing of these houses, I mean, I think that is probably technically not illegal. Well, I don't know, know, but is it okay? Well, they, don't we hear about squatters' rights as well? I mean, it, it's probably such a niche issue that we're well, not across yes, what I, the rules are. I've no. never found myself in a situation where I've had a squatter or I've wanted to be a squatter. But you hear about squatters' rights, that the, the, the longer you live in there, yeah. Yeah, then the you greater have right. the claim is yeah, that's yes. right. to stay. I once knew a bloke in the UK, in London, who had been squatting in his place for 20 years. He was a friend of my parents. And, Where and, were the owners? And by the, well, exactly. But I don't know. But then by the, by the time you've notched up enough years and you can prove that you've been paying yep. your electricity and all that and you can prove a connection to the place, then it's yours. Then you own the place. You can actually on-sell it out from underneath the actual owner but after a certain amount of time. Who are the time. people who own the properties and can afford for yeah. them to be this sitting is what I don't understand. So arguably, like, I don't have a huge amount of sympathy and I think this is why there's not a lot of pushback on what this activist is doing because not that many people in the current cl climate, cost of living crisis, housing insecurity are going to be like, mm, I really feel for those people who have houses that are so empty that they don't even know who's in them. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go and vouch. I'm going to go fight for that. And someone who doesn't, someone, so someone who's sitting on an asset that's probably worth over a million dollars and doesn't feel any need to get any revenue out of that by renting it out. Yeah. That's what's weird. We moved into a the suburb we live in seven years ago. And you're squatting. And we are, yeah. And no one's told us to go anywhere. It's amazing. Um, more life. clues Great how life. many how many abandoned no, there's a, mansions there's a house, there are. The closest house to the shops, as we call it, has been empty the whole seven years we've been there. Right. 
And, and do you I'm know like, anything about the no, animals? No, we, we just make up stories. Yeah, here, I love of course, that. Right? Because that's what everyone does. Is there kids, a smell of dead you know, bodies emanating that's from the, the house? We're like, right. you know, and then recently, if there's any movement, recently there was movement there. Real estate agent turned up. And we're like, oh, it's finally happening. But who can afford to have that joint empty for seven years? I don't, I do feel some sympathy for whoever owns the home when they have the squatters move in. If it's a situation where, hey, listen, I'm overseas or I'm doing yeah. something and why have the squatters turned up? I mean, you do see those stories occasionally on a current affair where someone's gone on a 90 day cruise yeah. and they've returned home to the south coast of New South Wales somewhere. Yeah. And they discover that there are six blokes who are living in the lounge room playing yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, so I do right. have some sympathy for the cruise couple, yeah. Yeah. but I just don't understand how there are that many that are empty. I know at the moment there's a the housing minister in the state where we're broadcasting from at the moment, Rose Jackson, who's on a mission at the moment to track down you know, public housing that's empty. And there are a heap of them as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard for people when they're trying to get into a, a public housing unit or home and they're reading all these stories about thousands of them that well, are sitting you know empty. what? Some jurisdiction, and by the way, I want to come around and look at that place that is empty near your place and, <laughs> you're and, and move create in my next own. Well, you're going to be neighbours. See the movie, and or just <laughs> I love the idea that there's an old guy inside, oh, and yeah, that the yeah. kids outside are like nobody ever goes in, yeah. nobody <laughs> ever comes out, and someone's just shoving it could food be the new underneath set for the, the podcast. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> hey, there you go. This is all too. Short. There you go. Get rid of this one. Yeah. If you're listening to the podcast, you can see this on YouTube, and you can look at Ben Fordham's beautiful face, and you. You can look at Antoinette Latouf's beautiful face and you can look at my pass it passable <laughs> yeah, uh, like inoffensive face, on, face on YouTube. Um, but the, I mean, the thing about, uh, about owning a place, isn't a lot of it that there's foreign ownership? I mean, part of what the, the state government here in the state where we are, New South Wales, wants to do, the, the Premier has suggested, that's like the governor of the state, mm. has suggested that in the next budget he's going to talk about imposing a tax on uh, foreign ownership and a lot of the a lot of the kind of you know rumor mill about why places would be empty is because ri wealthy Chinese investors and, and have bought it up. Important and that you raise rumor mill it. because we haven't seen the data on these empty houses or units and who owns them. And so it's it's kind of easy to be like, oh, the Chinese, the rich Chinese. Are you are just an apologist for Chinese billionaires? I, absolutely are you not. A I would love of to a meet Chinese one. Psyop. I would love to. I would. I would love to find where the houses are empty. I may have to squat in one. Let's see how my court cases go. Um, but I, I just think that there's policy that is built off the back of data that is not readily, readily and publicly available. Well, we've should got some always. Data. We've got some data. Do you, want, do you want me to share some data? Yeah, but see, Ben Fordham yeah, hosts data. a three-and-a-half-hour so show this every morning. Me. He this knows surprised these me. Facts. Just recently we discovered these are newly built homes, newly built homes. The last round of data, which is from the start of this year, 11% mm. are bought by foreign buyers in the state of New South Wales at work. But does that mean they're vacant? No, 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 not yeah, vacant. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean about. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, there's, I, I get what you're saying. There's yeah. two different issues and if you combine them, then, yeah. then it's even worse yeah, but I mean, yeah. because so the they're one... empty, they're not being used and they're yeah. owned by someone overseas. But also when people are buying homes here and they don't live here, I think when we have so many people who live yes. here and they want a home, like I know that Canada, for example, has has gone down that path of saying, okay, we need to put some restrictions in place about people from outside of Canada who just want to own some of our real estate. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. We've done it with farms. We've done it with crucial assets. And at the moment, housing in general is a crucial asset. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, what, what some jurisdictions do, which I thought was rather clever, is they look at the water consumption. And so you can go to the utility and you can look at properties that aren't using water. Yeah, as a way house, to find no out, as a find, oh. as a way to find out what's empty. Yeah, right. and then instead of just walking along, walking down Ben Fordham Street and going, mm. "There's old Mister Crazy Dude <laughs> who's hiding inside a, an ostensibly empty house," you can go. They haven't used any water for the past nine months. So what's going on there? Then you could overlay that data with the foreign ownership data. Sure, and you and could look, presumably make the conclusion. Look, and arguably there, but are, no one's willing to do that because no, they're all afraid of being I, called I racist. Think, sorry to jump in, but I don't. I think that if you've got empty houses, I don't care who the owners are. I don't Something, care. Me too. I don't, I don't care. I only <laughs> want to target the China. <laughs> this is <laughs> what we're trying to do. My rank this. racism coming I, to the fore. That's what I was leading into. You <laughs> see? Look, I, I, I'm with Ben because if I don't care whether it's boomers or Chinese billionaires, if there are houses that are not being used, they either need to be taxed. We need to rethink what we're doing. Given housing is such in such mm. short supply, why should non-residents be allowed to buy property at all? Very good question. Um. 
Yeah, I can't. I mean, I'm not, why again, not I'm ban not, it? Why not not tax it? Well, that's it. what other countries have done. Why shouldn't Which why should a, have well, done that? Well, I why can't buy, it be a speculative I can't buy, investment? I can't buy property in plenty of countries. I can't buy property in China. Right. Right? Well, I can't okay. buy property in China. But, but a Chinese, Chinese person can buy property but we in rely China. And Ben so is a multi-billionaire <laughs> uh, I would like to. Uh, yeah, I would like to increase my portfolio. As you said, boomers and billionaires, which is my next book. Boomers and billionaires. Yeah. How I bought the Shanghai skyline for nothing yeah, but, but a, it's a fair question. Hope and a that, dream. Look, here's the the weird thing about it. When you're selling a property, there's nothing the seller wants more than a Chinese buyer turning up. Right? Because obviously they've they've got money. Well, that's it a stere- the, the stereotype that they yeah, have but, but money. You, no, but you yeah. also hope for it. Yeah. Right? You hope for it. There was certainly a period there in particular where real estate agents would People would be asking, "Have we got any Chinese buyers?" Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not racist to say that there are a billion Chinese people, and there's a that they have an economy which is incredibly unequal, and that they have crony capitalists who are flush with cash, and that they regard Australia as being one of the greatest safe havens in the world to store some of that cash. And their children are coming here to study, right? So you'd also be thinking, "All right, well." Yeah, well, we're currently, we're currently trying to sell our house at the moment, and we had at our auction, it didn't sell. Uh, we had. I our, saw your full page ad saying Chinese buyers <laughs> welcome. <laughs> we had a lot at the auction, a lot of people of Asian appearance, and the because I don't know if that they're Chinese, but my agent came up to me. I was like, "This is excellent! So many Chinese buyers." I was like, "Oh, do you know these people? Are they Chinese?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm just assuming." And I was like, <laughs> oh no! And I was like, don't well, assume it, Antoinette. Uh, yeah, I was like, "Well, <laughs> don't I mean, you know who I?" Am? <laughs> she was the head of the Media Diversity Council of Australia. Like, Jeez. Interesting assumption. I hope this assumption works in our favour. Um, it did not. We did yeah, not no. settle. Have you ever seen that famous clip? And if you, you if you put into YouTube, I'm pretty sure if you put in agents and Asians, it'll come up, right? What, oh, oh, God. And I don't know whether you can link it in here, but yeah, I'll send we'll, it to we'll you. And what it, it is, we'll it's from it an current affairs show. It's a, an, an Australian TV news show from 1970s, 1980s. And someone had put an ad in a newspaper while selling a home saying, no Asians. So the reporter quite rightly turned up and quizzed this guy in his front yard about how could you possibly advertise a property and then put a condition on the ad saying, no Asians. And he said, because I don't like them. And then it's like, oh, and the reporter's thinking, God, this guy, this is even worse. He's admitting to being a racist. And then he said, I don't like them. This Highgate isn't the one in London. It's a suburb of Adelaide. But it's the advert's last sentence that brought out a local TV reporter's crusading instincts. I'd just like to ask you a few questions about the house you've got for sale. Well, I'd rather not answer it. Why not? Because I don't want to. I'm not going to spell my business to anybody over there. Yeah, no, no, well, I'm not interested in uh, how much you want for the house. I'm just interested in why you don't want any Asians to buy it and move in. Well, because the simple reason they're too lazy. Why don't you want uh, Asians moving into your house? Because I don't like the Asians, that's all there is. They're you don't want them, you don't want them in a, your they're place? Just, they're just a mob of crooks, that's all they are. And that there's a law against what you're doing? Well, no one has told me that, and I mean to say even the Asians... Do you think it's wrong? Even the Asians himself, uh, you said uh, I can have my sign up, if I can get a buyer, I can sell it. Yeah, that, but you won't sell it to an Asian person? If they come up with a buyer, yes. All they're interested about is just to put the sign up. That's all. I've had them agents. I haven't knocked them back. What would... Oh, no, agents. <laughs> did, did you... Did you have a go at the agents? Agents. I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's a bad expression. That's... that's is uh, is that what you say, no agents? No, no, no. That, you say no, no agents. Agents. Sorry. <laughs> because why do I need them? I can sell the property on my own. And, and then they, no they realised oh, no. when he'd called up to put the ad in, he said, put at the bottom of the ad, no agents, <laughs> A-G-E-N-T-S. The person thought he said Asians. <laughs> so then the, the, the scene ends with the reporter going, oh, I'm sorry, there's been a terrible misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, wow. And if you're an Asian agent, forget <laughs> it. Mate, like, they're the best agents. It. They're the yeah, best yeah. one. They're the best Mate, They are the best really. real estate agents out there, the Asian ones. Uh, look, uh, so is there is there a solution to the housing crisis? I mean, this is something that not only Australia is grappling with, but so many different countries around the world. One, yeah. 
Yeah. I'd be interested to see what like Canada, US, the UK do in terms of foreign investment when it comes to property. I know you say that you know China doesn't allow us. But I don't mm. often look to China for policy leadership. Mm. Um, do you? Are you aware of what other countries, similar countries? Well, I know that there are some restrictions. So, like, yeah, I think New Zealand and I think Canada and other places. But also, have done something this is not this. as much as as you were joking before. <laughs> you want to blame it on on people in another country? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got Not a, people in another country. A, we've got Chinese a, people. Sorry, specifically this Chinese is a, people. This is racial animus yes. on my okay. part, Ben. We, there's a shortage of houses. Yes. yes. There's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. We have um, migration levels are, are at record rates. Um, it's a supply so issue. It's, it's like, an affordability issue. Surprise, it's, surprise. Yeah. When you And the other big issue too is that to get anything done, it takes so long to get anything done. I know, for example, I had a... A proposal before Strathfield Council, a local council here in Sydney, that was before it for about 18 months. And in the end, we just went, hmm. just forget about it. Yeah, right. Because, you know, you reach the point of going, all right, if you don't want to help us build something here, mm. it's going to make this into a better place. Yeah, um, and also like the strata rules about dividing places. I mean, there are, there are so many. And the 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 incentives, the financial incentives for stay, f- towards having your own home. So, like, what's happening is a lot of boomers, you know, a lot of my friends' parents are now empty nester boomers mm. at, who live in these massive places. But if they were to downsize it or sell it, then, of course, that suddenly has tax implications that they wouldn't have if they were just living in their home where they don't have to pay property tax on it. So, like, should you have to pay a property tax on the home that, you live in like a lot of jurisdictions do have that i think in the states you have to pay property tax on the basis of the value of your own home which you don't really have to here i mean we have council rates but it's nowhere near as big but in the size of these the places where an, an elderly couple are now living you could fit five families mm. yeah. if you subdivide or turn it into or, six, <laughs> or 100 yeah. asians you know how they love living cheek by jowl uh, you know if you had are rules you are on a mission Am I going to get cancelled for I'm trying to escape podcast? controversy. <laughs> like, I'm just... Oh, you're not saying it. It's my <laughs> show. Yeah, but I'm, I'm helping. I'm platforming you. I'm amplifying <laughs> you. I am sitting next to you. you. But you know how it will be flipped. Uh, of course. I'm, of course I'm sitting next to you. I'm enabling you. I'm trying to you. make you feel uncomfortable, Antoinette. <laughs> no, both of you. Let's it's move good. along and not a moment too soon. Uh, there's a discrimination ruling in Australia, which is getting a lot of headlines, because one of Australia's most respected art galleries, which is called Mona, which is in Tasmania. Which I would is say this- some most famous. Gallery. It's probably the most famous and yeah. most, yeah, mo- yeah. Well, there's the old galleries. There's yeah. the old, beautiful. Let's not start a fight. Oh, here gallery. we go. I know. Get a real because, fight. oh, you know, once I get started on gallery wars, <laughs> Welcome you'll never back. shut me up. Welcome back to Art Gallery Talk with Antoinette <laughs> and Josh, uh, where we go over all of the art galleries in Australia and rank them. And pit them up against um, one another. Yeah. So there's the old classic galleries, the National Gallery yes. in Canberra, but this is a, a new a uh, vibrant, exciting, provocative gallery mm-hmm. that's only been around for 20 years or something. Um, and and they had a an exhibit which was a ladies-only oh. room, a ladies-only exhibit. I'm loving the sound of this. And I, <laughs> you've, yeah, Ben, you'll love you because you're nothing if not a feminist, a raging oh, feminazi. Yeah. And I was there with the kids and- um, you, you got- You've got boys, don't you? No, a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl, okay. But she was five, so she yes. wasn't going to go into the room by herself. Right. You need to explain what the room is. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, it's, I don't know what the room is. It's a ladies' room. I'm not allowed in. Okay, you're, I can tell you. I, can, this I just said it was a ladies' can room I where only ladies there, are allowed. Your, your setup it? wasn't sufficient. All right, okay. thank you, Ben. can you set up, Yeah, we'll just have to be your guest and produce you at the same time. Yeah, okay, point, so it? it is behind some lush emerald green curtains and when you open there's male butlers who serve you champagne and in it it's all emerald green, very lush, very regal and it's got some lovely little pieces, like not many pieces but the, it's just a, a little space. Part of the experience is not the jaw-dropping art pieces that are there, it's more the experience of walking in and someone be ushering, ushering, ushering you in. That is the and the point experience. And the point of it is too. To just have a women's space. Yeah. Just to have a women's space. That's it. Yeah. Within an art gallery, which interestingly, I thought another place would perhaps be a woman's space because there's a wall, a vulva wall of vaginas, which is not a woman's That's space. That's not a woman's space. That's, That's just, true. That's we can all just see that. Yeah. <laughs> there are just- Ben's booking his ticket to Hobart <laughs> tomorrow. Go and see the vulva hundred, wall. Yeah, there's like yeah. A, the whole 100 vulvas on a wall of all shapes and all, with all different sorts of hairstyles. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not in the ladies' room. That's mm, hard. No. Um, so I have two daughters, um, primary school age, and we went in. My husband stayed outside. We went in for like a minute or two. 
Uh, they did not drink champagne. I am a responsible parent. Um, it was nice. We walked out. They liked the gimmicky feel of, oh, this is just for the ladies. Mm. We moved on. I like it as well. So what's yeah. happened now? Can I go back to the news? Yes. Is that, sure. yeah, enough of a, is that sufficiently yeah. uh, articulate, the description that I neglected to make? Mm. Mm. Then a man took the, uh, the art gallery to court. And said, New like, South Wales man. Why can't I? Why am I not allowed to go into this part of the, uh, you know, the gallery? Because it's for women. And everybody said, "Well, this is ridiculous. We have gay bars for only for gay people. We have women. We have men's space. We have men's clubs. We have women's space, safe spaces. We have women's shelters. You know, you're allowed to do to divide on the basis of sex. But the Tasmanian court has just ruled and said, no. What it said is, if the if the if the person had felt that they were offended on the basis of um, of an exhibit, then they wouldn't have a case. Mm. But if the point of the exhibit is not like to offend or to provoke, if it's simply creating a space that is own that is only available for women, and it should also be added that men have to pay the same entry fee, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like the men get a discount cool, or something. Like, but it know, is, it is, Mona <laughs> is, in context, Mona is huge. She can yeah, spend all day. It's not there. a large portion. It might only be 2% of the floor. So, so the court backed place. the bloke, right? Yeah, so the court the, backed the, the bloke, bloke and said they can't do this. Based it, on the discrimination There is no laws. artistic, there is no valid artistic. Now, what would be interesting to me is, since this is 2024 and not 1970, mm. And there actually aren't really any places where men hold power and sway where women are not allowed to enter. But there is. There's a venue in um, in Sydney where we're recording this, where women applied to be to get access to some type of gentleman's club in 2021, yeah, and that the was Australia rejected. Club. I think. Yeah, I think. I think there's yeah, one there's remaining. One, yeah, there's one old place where a bunch. And then, of and then up the road from there, there's a a women's club, the Queen's Club. Oh, is there? Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Same. And they're right. 200 metres apart. One is just for men. Right. One is just for women. Okay. I but mean, here's the thing. Who are the people who complain about this kind of stuff? Well, like, Jason is the it, new Karen. So it's a guy called Jason <laughs> yes. and he came from New South Wales um, to Tasmania. He visited there on the weekend and he was that annoyed that he couldn't enter that no, he space. he wanted that, to prove a point. Clearly. Yes, yeah, and exactly. So and he's proven what's it. illegitimate about proving a point? That's okay, what the law is all about. You're just trying to test, the the, test what's okay yes. and what's not okay. And I, I think the law is but, flawed. But then. I'm... If I'm in an art gallery and then I get to a spot where they say, okay, it's women only behind this little curtain, and then my son Freddie and I sit outside and my wife Jodie and daughters Pearl and Goldie, they go into the women's section and we sit outside and they come out five minutes yeah, later. Yeah, of course. I mean, I went to the place and I didn't sue the – Yeah. <laughs> I did not well, what, sue the annoyed? art gallery. No, I wasn't personally annoyed. But now that I actually, now that someone was annoyed, and I actually have to think th think it through, I do understand it. So I, I mean, what do you what understand? Would, well, it's lazy uh, curation and lazy provocation. It just for me, it buys into like this sort of fairly obvious narrative of like we live in a sexist society and women need isn't special treatment. Isn't art supposed to make us think? Yeah. And well, that, that makes me think. It doesn't make me think. There's a freaking, no, sorry, there's a freaking Volvo wall. No, it it's totally that, provocative. No, you know, what no, I'm no, thinking, no, no. and I haven't been think. there, right, but what I'm thinking, I'm imagining, I'm thinking, okay, I'm supposed to read into this and totally. think what the message is here. And the message is, hey, there are many sections of society in the world yes. where men have an advantage. Yes. Right? And, so and, in, and this is one where you don't. Yes. You sit out in the waiting room. Is that, a, is that a new message to you? But does, does it matter no. if it's not new? Is that a provocative needed? message, an interesting message? I think message? it's interesting, yeah. Is it? I think oh, it's, I feel I think like it's that's been the, the elite consensus for decades Yeah, now. but it might be the consensus, but not all things haven't shifted enough. You so I did, the maths. Be, I did the maths. Let me, let me just, can I okay. just say, yeah. what would be interesting or thought-provoking would be if there was uh, a room where only white people could go. Mm. What would be interesting would be if there was a room where only men could go, w flipping it on its head. Yeah. What would be interesting would be if there was a you know a, a place where only straight people. Could but you go. generally people like that. It, that would be playing around with. But they the are the power, power brokers. Hierarchy. But they are the power brokers already. So that doesn't. That's not. Who? That is the state of play. Who in Australia men have more power than women. So yeah, having a space exactly. where so only, it's obvious. But I'm not so sure having how a women's that is. Places, women's space can is be obvious. obvious. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just not very good, obviously, because it, you know, they, like, they lost the case. Yeah, like it's not it's not an artistic expression of anything particularly like, I, interesting. I, I, I don't like there. We, we've had examples before where there was one case where there was a, a meeting of some sort involving the Muslim community, and they had separate 
seating areas for yeah. men and women. You know, they, they separate, still do. They still right, do. separate, yeah. you know, and it was like, hang on, but it was at a community event and and other people were turning up going, hang on a moment, what's why are we segregating people based on male and female? There are some places that are, that are men's sheds. They're designed for men. Can a, can a woman say, hang on a moment, I'm going to take this to some tribunal because I want to be in the men's shed, yeah, I'm sure you no, probably there's can. A pur- no, there's a purpose for the men's shed, which is to provide solidarity, and there's a purpose for women's spaces, which provide well, solidarity. I, but this I can was, see the purpose in this. Well, you know, okay, since you mentioned Muslims, I mean, the imagine if the imagine if what they had done was they said, here's an area where uh, Muslim men can go, but Muslim women can't, or mm. Muslim women can go, but Muslim men can't, mm. and in so doing, we're going to satirise the the one field in our culture where you actually do have legitimate severe sexism and discrimination, or if it was Jews, for example, where you have some of those like orthodox, orthodox synagogues yeah. Yeah. where the women sit upstairs and the women downstairs. What if they had a little synagogue where the men have to sit upstairs and the women get to sit downstairs as a way of satirizing uh, you know, religious sexism, then I think that would be interesting. That would so be actually provocative. What I'm hearing Instead is that you want like, to be a museum curator and you've got some good ideas for I've Mona. I've got some ideas for well, Mona part two, I think baby. what's interesting about Mona is they've got 20, so the museum has 28 days to either allow men in or to, or for that per, the artist who's in charge of that particular exhibit to pull the exhibit. And from what I've heard, she's leaning towards just pulling it like, because the whole idea was for it to be She's like the experience is men's exclusion, and so I'm with her. I'm pulling the ex- exhibit. I'd I'd rather it be gone than um, cranky Jason. Yeah. Because in the time that he was there, he was there last April, and now it's April. So in a year, and I think this is a thing that pisses a lot of women off. In a year, at least fifty two women have been killed at the hands of their current or former partner. There are spaces where you're aware that's illegal, right? No, Killing I, women's illegal. Oh, thank you for telling yeah, me yeah, that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because people always say that. And I'm related to Mona, pe- but pe- no, no, important. No, people no, always, people always say that as if it's a slam dunk about how like no, no. how women get discriminated against. No, but as in, as in we aren't at a place in Australia, despite how better off we are, and I, you know, I want to put that caveat in, um, how more freely we live than women in other parts of the world, there are still basic fundamental rights that we do not have. Well, Such you do have safety. the right not to be murdered. It's illegal. But it's not being upheld. No, no, that no, no. Like, that many, right's not being protected. Right to we have a fundamental right to safety that's not being upheld. Well, I, I mean, know. that's because there are murderers who are mostly men. How many men get how many men get things. murdered by men? Right. So we don't we don't have gender pay parity. We can't assume we don't have a level of safety you that we should do be have forward. gender pay parity, but that's a whole other thing. Jan Fran did a great thing uh, video about this. We don't have gender this, pay equity. Way. So it's against the law to pay a woman less that for the same job than a man in Australia. But if you add up the total amount that women get paid and the total amount that men get paid and divide it by the number of people, women earn less because they choose lower paid professions and they take time off to have babies. I know, that's not what the, what the but a one to one, a one, a one, a one to one, it's illegal to pay a woman the same less for the same job. Yeah, and but that's example, not what the Wajia, that's not what the Wajia data shows though. The, what's the Wajia data? The, the the government women's gender equality agency yeah, I mean, data. Yeah, there are ways of fudging data. And well, it's the, it's the most data. no, but it's the most it's the most official oh, and let's reputable go back to government Mona. data. Yeah, bring it back to Mona. <laughs> so so <laughs> what so is going wanting, on? so I just thought that in that space, if the one thing you really wanted to advocate for, Jason, was your hurt feelings. About this is what riles people up and it's riles not hurt women feelings. up. It's just justice or injustice. It's him. Well, it's him feeling like there's a double standard. He's a sook. He's a, he's a sook who's pointing to a real thing, which is that if you flipped the genders and it was a male-only space, all hell would have broken loose. I don't think it would. Mm. You don't, I think you don't think that the, all, you don't think the social all. justice if, activists on Twitter. Look, you don't think that Mamma Mia and, and the project would have done stories about the space in Tasmania where men are being, yeah, you know, are being I, given look, a I privileged agree, space. I agree. If it was a bar, yes. In an art gallery, I want to be challenged. Yeah, I want to see that things that are going to make actually. me think. Yeah. You know, and I, and I don't understand that if you're going into a, into Mona, which is known for controversial and thought provoking. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I just and think there'd be more thought provoking ways of doing it. Yes. No, I'm with you. Obviously, I'm with you because I didn't sue Mona, but you know, I also think it's pretty lazy. If your worldview is that in 2024 that we live in a scenario in which we're unaware of the 
challenges that women face. We're unaware but it's not of gender that inequality. You're unaware. We're just... unaware, like that we're not dealing. That the real core problem is that men walk through this world completely clueless about their own but privilege. But some do. Some that do. Is, well, some do. I mean, some women think they're chickens. I mean, there's all kinds but, of strange but, but, people. But, but, but we're it, not but arguing. The mainstream opinion in Australia is is at the moment perfectly consistent with a fairly lazy attempt at here's a woman's space because women always have had it hard. We've got the men we've got the memo that women had it hard. Like I think I, just I don't, don't think, I don't anyone, think, I don't any, think that is a provocative point. I don't think there's make. real harm or danger in reminding people that. No, I don't there's think no there's harm, a or, harm danger. or danger. I don't think just, Paul was just, harmed. I no, it just means was... that the forty-five dollars that he spent on Mona should have been forty-four dollars and sixty cents. Yeah, he didn't I mean, I think I'll room. give him the forty cents. I think it also highlights the point that this artist is the only artist that we're talking about out of the Mona gallery. Yeah, and the, the and truth the is, vulva, and, and the vulva, and the vulva. Yeah, the truth and the is, vulva and she's hilarious. Vulva. Have you seen some of her interviews? No. She gives interviews. Um, she has a um, in the background, even if it's live. I saw her on the project, and a butler comes and pours her her champagne, and she's like, "This is hysterical." The men are hysterical. Like she's just in character of some. I don't. But she's just she's the best thing ever to come out of this. <laughs> All right, fabulous. The other gender thing that's exploded this week is this court case in federal court between uh, a trans woman who is suing uh, the creator of a women's only app which is called giggle it's like a, a safe space for women to have a social media environment it was sometimes reported as a, i've never even heard of it no well it's giggle versus because, tickle giggle versus tickle because the trans woman's name is, tickle. is roxanne tickle this is so so tickle v giggle you see had you never heard of this uh, of this case i don't know I the case it? and i saw oh, okay. I, I saw your podcast app and yeah. when i first saw giggle versus tickle i was like is this is that like satire? Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. The, the, her real her, her real name is Roxanne Tickle, and the the, the app is called Giggle. Giggle but you okay. haven't heard of the app because it's never got off the ground because no. it's been embroiled in court right. proceedings. Right. Okay. For but, but again, okay. this Years. is similar to Mona in that Tickle wanted to go into a place that was not designed for Tickle. It, it, it well, was yeah, a, but trans activists say it was designed for Tickle because Tickle's a woman. Well, it says on her birth certificate that she's, yeah, she's a woman. had the gender reassignment surgery. surgery and... Okay, but, but the, the way that the app worked is that in order to sign up and be a member, they wanted a, a, a space, a safe space for women, women only, right? A little bit like that room in the gallery. So as part of the sign-up process, you had to, like you've got to do a lot of the time, you grab yeah, your phone. Yeah, but her, her birth certificate you, you says a, she's a you woman. You take a photo of yourself. And it's uploaded to the yeah. to the thing, and then, the, and then essentially AI a... determined yes, yes, you're a woman, and AI determined on tickle that tickle wasn't a woman. Now, Actually, tickle that's not exactly male. what happened. Actually, what happened was that the AI passed her, and then manually she was booted off when they did okay. a, when they did a review, and it was and, right. and she didn't. But, but I think either I think, way, the I question think... is whether or not biological women have a right to have yeah, much like the yeah. the Mona thing, a space for themselves from which they exclude trans women. And it's extraordinary to me that this story hasn't been covered That's by the, the part. ABC That's by the part that I'm Mia, more interested in. No one wants to talk about the potential conflict between yeah, and trans I think, rights and women's and rights. And I think that's the more interesting part. We can get into the granular detail of this app and was it AI and should she be there in safe spaces? I think the reticence amongst, and what you pointed out, usually progressive spaces by The Guardian, because The Guardian has done op-eds and news articles, that there has been a reluctance. Probably always critical of, of the app. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm not I, sure. I'm, the, I, I did, I did, I did the news stories look. have been pretty straight. Yeah, the news stories have been straight and... I think yes, probably the it was a sympathetic op-ed, but at yeah, least they're having those. It would be amazing those... to me if there was an opinion piece in the Guardian that sided with the app. Sure, fair enough, and I can't I can't well, say I, that I've I read can that. tell you that the Two GB Breakfast Show has covered this issue. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> and I um, we've interviewed Sally Grover, who yeah. is the lady who set up the the Google yeah. app. Yeah. But you know, again, I see Roxanne Tickle as a troublemaker, a bit like the bloke who wanted to go into the into the area at Mona. It's like there are some places that are not for you. There are a lot of places have opened up for you and they will continue to do so, but there are some places that someone's gone no, to the trouble it, of designing something in, for a certain type of person. And these are women and obviously the person who set this one up, biological women. So if you don't fit into that category... Well, I think the, the interesting part is that this is going to, it's a really important test case for our discrimination law. And I think that's what we should be talking about. But there is, there is such reticence even amongst progressive circles to have the discussion about the caveats and the grey areas around trans issues, because you may fundamentally believe that trans people have are, do exist and a trans woman is a woman, but there are still issues within the law and there are still 
concerns about gender reassignment surgery. What do you and think? I, I mean, I don't know this case too closely, but I understand and I'm part of that reticence to talk about trans because I believe that trans women or trans men exist, how they- well, everyone knows they exist. And have a right to be protected. How within the scope of discrimination laws? I don't know. I'm also wary of the, there's a lot of attention and a lot of um, kind of moral panic about what trans- women are going to do in private spaces that I go into, like a bathroom that's mm. not backed by, you know, it's potentially going to be violent and sexual assaults that's not backed by evidence. So sometimes- well, When you say it's not backed by evidence, what does that mean? As in, where are the criminal cases that suggest that this has been happening? They, Yeah, they are there. They in are Australia? There. Uh, I don't know. But yeah. I mean, according to Sally, about 10% of the Queensland prison population in women's prisons are now trans women. And you've, oh, you know, I some don't. cohort of the, of those people are, will be guilty of sex crimes, and some cohort of the women who they're sharing those prisons with mm. will be victim will have been victims of sex crimes, and they're now having to right. share a space with a woman who may have a penis. Yeah. yeah. Um. And you know, there are cases absolutely in the UK that there have been a number of cases of. Uh, of women being assaulted in in rape shelters and in prisons by trans women, which I, I agree completely and, and concur the, with you, Antoinette, that there's a there's a conservative moral panic about yes, this. Yes, and, yeah. and but, I, but I, I think because of that moral well, panic, it makes reasonable like people very project, difficult. Exactly, yeah, it makes it hard to talk to, about. To, to but, we have, but that's our job. We have to. Well, do I, it. I agree yeah. with Let, you. Use the sport example. I remember five or six years ago, I started talking about transgender athletes in sport and mm. saying this is a big issue. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I was told very early on, oh, mate, I'd be careful about talking about that. And I said, but it's just so, it's such an obvious one. I mean, if someone is born male and they're then competing against females, it's so obvious that in most cases, they're going to have a physical advantage over the, over the girls, right? Mm. Now, I remember a friend of mine at one stage, then over the five or six years since, it's become bigger and bigger and bigger because of the Leah Thomas case, the swimmer in the United mm. States who started winning all of the, the, the awards and all of the medals. I had a friend say to me, why are you so obsessed with this case? And I said, because it's not fair. She goes, why is it not fair? And I said, well, look, do you want me to show you some footage? And when you have a look at footage of, for example, we have a case in Australia, Hannah Muncy, uh, born male, transitioned to female, played handball um, as a male and then became a female and then played with the women. And if and AFL as well, Australian mm. football, when you see Hannah – on court and the size of Hannah against the other competitors, you don't have to be an expert in equality or gender science or anything else to say that's not fair. Mm -hmm. There's something about that. Now, I want to protect that because I just don't think that I, I want to see in a race, I don't want people um, having an advantage because they've got something pumped into their veins in a race, mm. and I don't want to see someone have an advantage in a race because they've got bigger bones or bigger muscles. No, and I, I agree with all of that sentiment. What's been interesting as an observer, and I don't have strongly held or very invested views in this space. But, but is that because you're afraid of having those views? But, but not but afraid because I don't, because because I'm concerned about the harm that the moral panic is having that I'm reluctant unless I understand more and do more work, and this is laziness on my part, do more work to understand the legislation, understand that data. But that sounds like equivocation. Isn't the solution to the moral panic to not get panicked and to just say things as plainly as Ben just did? Yeah, but I don't, I don't actually... Ha I mean, I have, the, I have similar views in that there are biological differences in most cases where men will have an advantage over women in sport. Well, I guess what I've found interesting as an observer is people who generally have no interest in women's sport or generally have no track record in women's rights come and kind of punching in and being like, now we've got to protect women. Do you know why that is? And I'm like, oh, you never cared about it's women in any, any other arena. It's because the I'm not usual- i that's you. I'm not suggesting that's you. The usual suspects who should have been taking up this fight on behalf of women have been silent and absent. Sure. So in the absence of them getting involved, other people go- well, I'm now going to get involved. I highlighted a case when I started talking about this six years ago of a, a runner in the United States who was ranked, always ranked out of the top 400, right, as a male, oh, right. became yes. female, number one. That was one example. I'm like, that. sorry, that doesn't seem to me like fair. 
when you when you appreciate that with swimmers they wake up at three o'clock in the morning and they get in a pool in the middle of winter and they stare at that black line for hours on end all because they want that one chance of winning that gold medal. But that that chance should not be taken away by someone who's got I, an unfair advantage over them. And it's the silence that's a, that's forced other people to step up and speak about it. And the Leah Thomas case is a classic example mm. of I think there's a there's a woman who really highlighted that case. I think her name is Riley Gaines. I might be wrong, but she's kind of become a big figure in the States over this. She tells the story that the first time she was beaten by Leah, they actually tied. They touched the wall at the same time. So they were like, okay, you guys are both first. They had one trophy. And they explained to Riley that Leah will be holding the trophy. And she was like, and they said, look, decision's been made. Leah's going to be holding the trophy. And she kind of felt straight away like, has this been predetermined here that we want to be seen to be so accepting and so welcoming that we're going to make it unfair for someone like me to win the race. And I understand how that's unfair. I just do wonder in all of these discussions, like how many people are going to be Olympians? Like okay, the, 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 the let, idea let that people that become you. trans, you, you know, to, to be to win a gold medal, let, to let steal a gold medal. You. It's not about becoming an Olympian. If you have a look at cycling, like cycling at the moment is a honeypot for athletes who were once male, who are now female, to win prizes, win sponsorship, win awards, win opportunities, a ridiculous number of male-born cyclists are dominating female cycling. That's unfair to women. I'm going to go into battle. Also, I mean, you can you just have to look at it. Does you don't have to talk about the Olympics. You can just talk about your local community the soccer field where the people who are picked for the soccer. I mean, if you've got a bunch of 15 year olds and and you know there are only so many people on a side. You know, so one girl. If if there is a person who went through puberty, a girl who went through puberty as a male and has male bone structure and male mm. muscle tone and is now on um you know on hormone on hormones. Then she is taking a position away yeah. from a biological female. And, and, I don't. Well, well, yeah. I, I completely agree with you, Antoinette. That, and I asked Sal Grover yeah, this on the recent. I was going to recent, ask if, if, if you if you opinion? don't hear the portion of the podcast with Sal Grover in which I ask this question, then you're not a premium subscriber on Substack because we had a great <laughs> forty minute conversation after the free feed ended, uh, where I was saying to her, "Don't you feel a bit weird about being?" having such weird bedfellows that basically you've got these far right kind of reactionaries on 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 you know sky news after dark or you've got right wing rap bags writing for some tabloid and all of a sudden it's the most important thing in the world for them to celebrate women's rights when actually a half century ago they would have been the ones opposing feminism and they would have been the ones yeah, fighting against women's women's yeah. rights and she made the point look you try to get your word out however you can get your word so, out. And I think it's the job of people like us and including people like you, Antoinette, to have the balls, pardon the pun, to or pardon the expression, to stand up and go, you know what, this is something that reasonable people should be talking about so mm. that we don't cede the territory to to the mm. right yeah, and make it true. only no, something I, do, that they can You know, can there's a guy, about. I interviewed a guy about a year ago. He wrote to me and he said, look, I've heard you on air talking about the whole issue to do with trans athletes and whatever. And I always put in the comment that I say, I want trans people to be able to play sport. I want them to be able to compete. I want them to be able to be on the field and do whatever. But when it comes to competition, professional competition, I don't think that this is fair. I also support the idea of having open categories. At some point, we should be having at Olympic Games, at Commonwealth Games, open categories where it's male, female, open. Mm. And, and, this, and funnily enough, there would be a very lucrative market for someone to create some of those competitions outside, say, Olympics of open. It attract a lot of sponsorship. There'd be a lot of there'd be a lot of corporates who would see that as um, somewhere they'd like to put their money. But I just feel like if we were all standing there on the on the sideline watching a game and and we saw there was an unfair physical advantage going on on a football field, I feel like we would all mm. speak up. Yeah, but the, the trans activists would say there's always an unfair advantage of some kind because that's what aptitude is. Like people are going to – oh, some people are born – Ian Thorpe's off, born off, with size 16 shoes, so better in the pool. Off the, like, off the sporting you know? field and into that app, ha, ha, have you got a strong opinion as to whether Tickle should be on Giggle? Well, I've got a strong opinion about what the law currently states and without tr wanting to interfere with the proceedings yes. of the current – case, it certainly strikes me that the 2013 version of the Sex Discrimination Act, which the Gillard government uh, rewrote, is pretty clear that a person who says that they are a woman is a woman. 
and the uh, the Australian Human Rights Commission has made a submission to in this case against Sal against the app, yep. saying that sex is not binary and not biological. That's a lie. It is definitely biological. Uh, gender might not be. Your gender expression might not mm. be. But sex, you know, in the mammal, in the whole animal yeah. kingdom, and the whole, the, you know, the idea of there being one half of the population that has sex genes, you know, of one a double X or, a, or an XY. The idea that you might have go have you know. I don't think I need to explain what yeah. a man is and what a woman is. Then the Human Rights Commission goes on to say that you can change your sex by um, medical procedure, you can change it by changing your birth certificate, or you can change it by any other means not listed here. Uh, and right. therefore, you're really opening the the door to the erasure of the ability of biological women to conceive of themselves as a group. I'm not a woman, so I don't have a dog in that fight. I find it curious- that so many feminists. Well, with 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 Tickle because she does and has identified as a woman and been a woman for several years. It's on her birth certificate. She's done the gender reassignment surgery. I see her as a woman, and I don't mind sharing an app space with her. Would I want to tackle her in a rugby game? I don't know. I'm not a very athletic person. I don't play sports, so I haven't given that a huge amount of thought. Probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah I personally, if I was I using no, an app, I, I would. No I would not. Ca- with a I would trans not woman care. Being on an app I would not with care. Me, but the question, the question welcome. here is: it, the question here is not should there be apps that include trans woman women as women. The question is: should there be allowed to be one app? That is only for biological women, created by a right. woman who only wants it to be for biological women. I, I think beware. That's that, what the, well, that's what's testing. The that's law. what's being tested. Sure. I, I I think the guy who's trying to get into to Mona is a shit stirrer. I think um, the person trying to get in the into the app is a shit stirrer. But only and one I has think, been historically marginalised, yeah. and not the other, and that's the trans person, and not and not and I think people who Jason. people who are born male and insist on competing against females at the elite level are shit stirrers as well. I mean, here's an interesting thought experiment. If the shoe was on the other foot and there was something that men did that was being persistently undermined by trans men, do you think men would have put up with it for a second? We wouldn't have a bar of it. There's a reason why the the posters and the placards at the pro-trans rallies all say trans women are women. Mm. They never say trans men are men because men go, fuck off. Now, that may be bigotry or it may be that men have more of a backbone and women and feminists are currently confused. Or that when we talk about the physicality, I mean, that's a disadvantage. If I go to and and, and transition into a male, I'm going to be I'm not going to have an advantage. That's my in point. A, that's in my a, point. In so in my in my thought so experiment, that's my, that's in my thought experiment, what I'm saying is a big a bigger no, deal. That's what I'm saying. In yeah. my thought experiment, flip the flip the power and suppose that there was some pursuit in which you actually did have an advantage as a trans man. Mm. Right? We wouldn't have, we wouldn't tolerate it. Be like, no, fuck off. Yeah, maybe. So I kind of started saying something and then lost my thought because I'm slightly I, confused. I, I think because I, very... I think I interrupted. No, that would Sorry. Be like you. <laughs> yeah. I had a guy contact me and say, look, I've got had a son called Max who's now my daughter, Maxie. And I said, really? Like, really young. I, I think um, 12 years old. And this was a process that happened over a number of years and whatever. And so he came into the studio and I, I interviewed him. But what was interesting is he said, um, but I agree with you on the sports stuff. Like oh, he, then, said, he said, trans I, people yeah, who he said, have, I, have I those really want, views. Yeah, I want you to, he goes, I want you to understand what I'm going through as a father and what would you do in this situation? I'm like, well, I think I'd, probably be doing what you're doing, which is listening to your child. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, some real big heart-to-hearts with Max, who's now Maxi, and beautiful family. I've got to know them reasonably well. But he just said, oh, but, yeah, on the sports thing, if Maxi one day said, okay, I want to be on the Olympic swimming team, he reckons as a father he would do, be doing his best to say, listen, I'm not sure about that, you know? I mean, is it's it interesting. Fair? and I, I think the fact that you're raising the case of somebody who's known from a very early age is important as well because one thing that we've sort of muddled in all this because it's so hard to talk about and because people are afraid of being called bigots or whatever is that we haven't done a very good job of differentiating this tiny cohort of people who've existed across time and across space in so many different cultures who from the moment they're at the youngest age just feel like they're born into the wrong body. And these people need our love and compassion. The only thing we can do is to help them to transition uh, and to, you know, to not discriminate against them in any way. But then I think people feel like there's also an ideology 
that has grown up in the past five years especially, which says there's no such thing as men and women, sex is binary, sex and gender are the same thing, there are no biological differences, you can basically choose whatever your sex mm. is, and you'll have you know friends of mine who have kids in who are 15 years old in inner city kind of woke social justice type schools where half the class is yeah. trans, Yeah, you know? Also the trans- And, the and trans... you can't criticise that without being seen as a bigot about the other. But I, I wonder what it's like is for the gay and lesbian community, right, where you, like, the, the trans activists have been so strong. There must be some gay and lesbian activists who kind of think, okay, we really took our time with our fight. Like, you know, well, the gay and lesbian community a took a long of, time to get their point across. Right. So a the trans, trans activists well. have come out with fireworks and they come out. But there out. are, I mean, there are also, there's also a lot of unease growing among the, among the, the gay the community. Groups. Yeah, about whether or not, like there's a growing opposition to gay marriage, especially in the States. There's worry about wind back to gay rights, about whether gay marriage could conceivably be overturned by a future Supreme Court in the in the States. And a lot of the backlash against gay rights is being fueled by by middle American, small C conservative people who are just a bit confused by this whole gender stuff that's so being you, shoved down their throats. Do you think as, the, as a result of the, the trans and gender yeah. stuff that there's being pushed back on? Yes, yeah, so I think people it, people regard rate? it as being the same yes, the same right. thing. And Which so you, if they don't want their kids growing up in a world in which they're just told that there's no mm. no difference between men and women, then they also regard it as being they don't want to grow up in a world in which blokes can marry each other. But and, those and to your point, Josh, things. I think I, I agree. You're right that more people need to have, here we go, uncomfortable conversations and navigate these complexities. Otherwise, the result is a growing pushback by, you know, I see within my culturally conservative and religiously conservative community a lot of concern about sort of gender ideology more broadly and that's probably led them to be more homophobic than they used to be yeah. used, you know and i think it's actually it causes far more damage to a broader section of people than it does bringing people do, along do you day. have the pronouns on your like at the bottom of your email do you have the i, I don't she her do you I, have the, i don't but i have not, no, i have no, no cons like, it doesn't bother me if somebody does no, but no, no. I, I don't i don't put, um, use you don't judge don't them a little bit so just deep inside you know go you're a bit of a coward a bit of a what? Coward. No. Why are you a coward for doing? Because I don't think they really believe it. I don't think they believe that there's. I don't think they believe that there's any ambiguity. I don't think they think that anyone would be confused. Yeah. I think they're just doing it to signal to other people no, that it, they're part of the team. Yeah. yeah. I don't. They're I don't do right it. Side. But it doesn't. I, I, I can't say I really take note of anybody else's either. Doesn't no. But bother I, me. But. I, I've got a mate who works in a company with 800 employees, and at one stage he was told, "Listen." We're going to have this at the bottom of all of our emails from now on. So, you know, you've got the email address, the mobile number, the whatever, and then it's going to be the, the he, him or the yeah, that's, or that the Yeah, that seems whatever. like a PWC he, yeah, he Deloitte said, thing. Why? Because it was his job that he had to go and approach these 800 people and say, you need to fill. He was like, why? Has someone raised this? Has it been brought to, and they went, no, we just thought we should. I always think it's yeah, I mean, Sometimes I you don't have a choice. I'm not in. saying that the people who don't have a choice are cowards. No, I'm saying no. that the HR people who make the rule yeah. are cowards. I always think an opt-in system like that is far better. But, but don't you see Like that if you too? want to, add it. If not, yeah. don't. I, I saw a TikTok video from a recruitment person, this woman, and she was saying, just so you know, I'm a job recruiter. And when I see the he, him, she, her, they, them, whatever, I think you're going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. <laughs> and oh, I was yeah. like, you know what? Preach. No. Yeah. You're saying something that I'm probably too thing. afraid to yeah. say. No, but, but I the truth is, but it's such a double that standard. That would be true. It's such a double standard because the, the recruiter is then going to go to this HR department who is rolling out all of these inclusive, inverted commas, not inclusive policies. Like it's just, there's so much corporate bullshit that it's confusing. So that person may or may not actually have much affinity to pronouns, probably thinks they have a better chance of getting a job if they include it because that's what all their friends at Westpac that's tell the, them. That's the coward part. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what all the their friends part. at Westpac tell them they do and, you know, Deloitte has it at the bottom of their all these, you know, all these yeah. large companies. Um, yeah, I don't know. But so just, just to just to wrap that up, Antoinette, I mean, since you say that it's important that we should have these conversations, I'll give you the opportunity to have the actual conversation. Do you think that it's legitimate for biological women to have spaces of their own? On an app, no, that doesn't bother me. In it doesn't sporting, bother you or nobody should be allowed to do it? I don't have really have strongly held views on it. Like I'm not going to. But that's just because you know that no, your no, peers I don't. are going to jump no, down your throat No, I don't because I would something. say in sport, I see the issues in sport because there are um, 
disadvantages to women. I see that in an app. And the fact that you might be called a turf and have to put up with, with weeks of, so with weeks of far, hate like, on have Twitter. Have I ever what? shied away from things I really believe in if I think I'm going to be criticised? No, no. But Josh, here's <laughs> so, the thing, right? If you wanted to create a club, and let's forget whether it's an app or a club or a space or whatever it is, and it was just for gay Jewish ex-employees of the ABC, and I didn't fit into that category. That's fine by me. I don't care if there's a but club just like for Lebanese people, apps. if there's a club just for But there are women. dating apps like that, dating but, apps for- But, but yes, why is are. it, there why is it like that on that. the one category of the way you were born that all of a sudden we go, oh, no, you can have exclusive clubs for everyone else, but on that one thing you're not allowed to? Why? That's because, that's because we have all come to agree somehow without having the conversation really, but somehow through stealth, activist groups have got- the law to agree that the category of female includes biological males who have transitioned. And transition could mean simply declaring it to be so over a sufficiently long period of time with enough, you know, a a sufficiently emphatic Mm. emotion. We might need to go back at some stage to that change, the Julia Gillard change, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the only solution or the solution is feminists have to be cool with women with penises being in whatever environment is for women. What, why do you want to be on an app with these nasty people who you despise anyway? I don't get it. If these people have got these strongly held views that they only want to hang out with biological women, then why would you want to be on their frigging app in the first place? Go and find another app. It's Create it's- your own app. Stop trying to barge your way into places where you have not been invited. Yeah, but that to the trans activists sounds oh, like no. someone in the 1960s saying, why do the black people want to sit at our lunch counters? Oh. They've got their lunch counters. Why do they have to come into our pubs? We've got, there's the Aboriginal pub next door. Why do they have to come to our have a trans activist and, and put that to the trans activist. Like, why would you want to be in that? in that space if you're not, they would if you're say not welcome. That, they would say that's not the point. It's a test case, much like the Mona thing. It's not about me wanting yeah. to be. It's about do I have a human right to be regarded as the sex that it says on my birth certificate, as the sex that I feel that I yeah. am. It's, mm. a, it's a matter of principle. Okay. So I well, think I'll we've be, solved well, that. I'll be, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm Gosh, still hardly. fuzzy about Antoinette's position. Well, I think, uh, I think you, as, are you as, as a feminist, you're okay with women who have conventionally male I genitals. I told you like I am. On an app, yes. Being... I, in, on an app, yes. I've, I have a trans friend who shares, who I've been in bar, I've never felt unsafe with no, the no, one no, or not, two. You're, you're okay with that. App. You're okay with them having the right to prevent the existence of a space that excludes them. Say that question again. It's not a question of whether or not you'd be okay on the app. You're okay with, with that woman, that trans woman, yes. being able to force everybody else to include them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On the app, yes. In all spaces. Well, I, mean, uh, I mean, in all spaces, okay. sport, not so much, as okay. I said, not okay. sports, but on apps. But okay, I mean, in a social toilets, environment, it would be a- I've had, I've had no issues. Having said that, I've probably had interactions with two or three trans people. As in my life, I've got like I have I have one trans friend who I used to work with. Um, there's so much discussion about trans and coming into our spaces, and I'm like, is how many trans, people? Is your trans friend a he him or a she her or a they? A, them? A transition from male to female. Okay. Works in the, works in one the media. One thing Sal said that I thought Listen, was I'm interesting just like, is where that- are they? Where are all these trans people taking over? Because I operate in media circles, art circles, creative circles, one progressive thing, circles, thing, and I don't even yeah, know. Well, that's because you're surrounded by that. So one, they they're one cycling. Thing, they're, <laughs> they're cycling. I'm one telling you, they're like, on the bike. This whole one, panic of they're coming and take over. I'm one like, where thing are that, they? Well, you have the good fortune of not having, you know, uh, in, had a bad encounter with, with, with any of them. One thing that Sal says is, you know, that feminists who are pro-trans, they'll think of themselves as pro trans Sal would say she's pro-trans as well but the feminists who think of themselves as as being on the right side of this argument will often think about the nicest man and the nicest trans woman that they could imagine Mm. they don't think about the worst she says the reason why trans women shouldn't be allowed in women's safe spaces is the same reason that my father shouldn't, even though he's the best man ever. Yeah. Because you have to you have to draw a boundary around the whole cohort in order to exclude the bad apples. It's not good enough to be like, oh, I've been into lots of bathrooms with lots of trans women and never had a problem. And look, if of I course, was- I've been. You mean you just mentioned fifty six women were killed last year. That means that 13 million weren't. If you I was the say, PR well, well, I walk, guy- I walk through my life and I never meet male murderers. There's if not I a was problem. the spin doctor or the PR guy for the trans community, 
I'd be saying, hey, listen, can we just can we pull back on a couple of these areas here where we're the sport thing and some of these other things? Let's not get involved in these fights. I mean, and this every is my, single you're opportunity. putting your finger on exactly think, my main I, concern. Which I don't is, think it helps I'm the community. I'm part of this community. I mean, I'm not trans, but I'm part of the LGBTQIA plus community. I know lots of trans people and I know lots of trans people who are really uncomfortable with the heat that is being generated Mate, by all these controversies. That's Maxie's dad. He's and saying, it'd just just be goes- like, just let us live our lives. We just want to live our lives and we'd rather this yeah. not become a national firestorm every time, you know, just- Take well, that's, the win. That's Take where I say the with, that if you think of Maxi, right, and that's what th- this father was saying, it's hard. He goes, because every five minutes now there's another story and another, you know, a lot of them involving sport, which I cover, but it's, you know, I don't, I don't think it's helping a young person like Maxi grow no. up. And that's not to, bl- not, not to put all the blame on the extreme trans activists because the conservative the reactionary panic. media oh is God. also guilty of a moral panic so here. Much but the two sides issue. embolden each other and if it was just us having the conversation, everything would be fine. <laughs> trans people would have all of the rights that are meaningful to them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm also conscious of where, thing. like, there's no trans person here and I can't pretend. I can't. But yeah, none quit of us that bullshit, port- Antoinette. I won't have a bar of it. No, I'm- I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't buy into any of the kind of like. Oh, you know, we it's don't have standing people. to talk about. Do we don't have trans. But I can't. We can't purport to say that we would be able to. We would have this conversation and be able to give trans people what they want. I don't know what all trans. Yeah, I don't know, know what trans people. Know nobody's talking about all trans people. <laughs> yeah, he might you be a trans. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> well, this is what true. kind of conclusions are you jumping to? I'm with you, Antoinette. That if we were talking about what it's like to be to have a lived experience of being trans, then we'd be out of line. But talking about the way that I'm, I'm sick and tired of this idea that nobody is allowed to talk no, about absolutely about yeah, how we structure our society. Like we all have buy-in here. We're all part of a demos. We're all trying to figure out yeah. how to muddle through and get by in this crazy democracy we call Australia. So we're all allowed to talk about how we want to relate to absolutely race and gender. Absolutely, we and are. But as I said, I have I pro- I'd probably benefit from interacting with more trans people because I've had I know three. You know, mm. and so it's, not it's a lot hard. Out there. Well, th- th- that's the other point I'm Except making. Except for you, it's man. Not a lot out there. That's the Except other point I'm making. The amount of time and effort spent talking about trans people or pushing back against trans okay. people is really disproportionate to the population, and I think the threat that they supposedly pose. Yeah, absolutely, they don't pose a threat. Exactly, that's... they don't pose a threat. Uh, you know, we're just talking about whether or not there's a, an interesting contradiction between women's rights and uh, the rights of that that minority. Uh, m- meanwhile, moving to international news, uh, Joe Biden says that the United States is considering dropping its legal pursuit of Julian Assange. He was asked this just briefly by a reporter. Well, I I don't know how much credence, Ben, you give these kinds of remarks when a reporter thrusts a microphone in front of the leader of the free world as he's walking along with the Japanese Prime Minister and Mm. he says we're looking at it. Should we be reading tea leaves on that? No, we shouldn't be reading too much into it, but if it is true, it makes you wonder what's the fuss been about for all of these years. I mean, we know it's that- 14 years. I know. It's and, like, you know, it reaches a point where you've got to say, okay, enough's enough. The bloke was a um, a journalist, if you can call him a journalist. Well, who, that's a big, yeah. Who, yeah, that is that, a big so I'm using that yeah. loosely. I think yeah. with WikiLeaks, the thing with WikiLeaks, I think when they first came along, I can remember they, they released a video of, of a really horrific scene. To hear the rest of this conversation, go to uncomfortableconversations.substack.com slash listen, and you will get your own personal premium podcast feed with at least three extra episodes of the podcast every month and heaps of extra stuff, including the remainder right now of the fabulous conversation you've just been hearing. If it was worth listening to this much of, don't rob yourself of the rest. Pull out your phone right now and search for Uncomfortable Conversations on Substack. Substack.